What's happening guys? It's Shane. So welcome to another episode of low effort content. This is what happens when I try to do a 30 day challenge. I kind of burn myself out a little bit and then I decide to do some easier videos like this. So today we're going to be reacting to one of my favorite YouTubers out there. This is going to be Graham Stefan. He's one of the biggest personal finance YouTubers around. He is going to be interviewing Jessica who just graduated from medical school and she's got about $500,000 in student loan debt. I'm going to be really interested in what Graham has to say here. He's definitely an expert on a lot of different areas in personal finance. I don't know how much he knows about student loan debt specifically because there is a lot to know about it. It's different than other types of debt and it'll be interesting to see what he says. So let's jump right into it. I have $500,000 in debt. <laughs> Why? Man, Graham's face is classic here. Like you can see the wheels turning in his head. He's probably thinking with that kind of money, he could buy a lifetime supply of avocado toast, uh, iced coffee, and still have room for down payments on two or three different duplexes. Okay, so let's hear what uh, she went to school for. I just became a doctor. <laughs> okay. I literally just finished medical school. So um, I have I have 460 like actually $463,000 in debt um, wow. with interest starting my rates start from anywhere from four to 7.6% and the interest started queuing day one when the loans were taking out. Um, so like medical school costs probably like three, three fifty, but now it's up to four sixty um, due to the acute interest. Okay, so this is something that I like to tell you guys whenever I get the chance. It's something that almost nobody knows about until it's too late. So when you take out loans for grad school, this means master's, doctorate, sometimes professional degrees, anything that's above a bachelor level degree, these loans are gonna be known as grad plus loans, or if you involve your parents, they're gonna be the parent plus loans. And these types are much, much worse than the undergraduate variety of student loans. And I've gone over this before, you can check out my other videos, but basically there's a few things. First, the schooling itself is usually much, much more expensive. You will routinely see schools that do graduate level programs that charge over $50,000 a year. This isn't like a crazy, oh my God, sort of situation. Like, you know, once in a while you'll see an undergraduate private school that charges that much. This is actually extremely common. It's almost the rule. The grad plus loans are essentially a blank check for schools to charge as much as they want. On top of this, the interest is extremely high. For instance, last year, there was a 7.6% interest rate on grad plus loans. 7.6% is ridiculously high for an interest rate. On top of that, there is a 4.2% servicing fee that gets taken out right away whenever your loans get dispersed. And if that's not enough, grad plus loans start accruing interest right away. Other types of loans, undergraduate loans, they will start accruing interest after you graduate. However, the moment you get that grad plus loan, it's accruing that 7% plus interest rate right away. So this girl took out $350,000 in loans in order to go to medical school. And during that time that she was in medical school, she accrued an additional $110,000 an interest. And did I mention that student loan debt is one of the only types of debt that you can't get rid of in bankruptcy? Okay, rant is over. I think you guys get the picture here. I always like to tell people about this so that they know what they're getting into if they decide that they want to go to graduate school. So let's listen in here and see what kind of doctor that she's going to become. So after five years, I'll be a general surgeon. And, um, you know, I don't just want to be a general surgeon. Of course, I want to go into either plastics or reconstructive surgery. So that's mm. going to be another one to three years of getting, you know, like 70 to 80,000. But after that, finally, it will jump up to minimum 350. Okay, so it looks like she's going to have to do a residency. And she was also referring to, I believe, a fellowship that plastic surgeons have to do. And that's going to take a total of eight more years before she actually becomes a fully fledged doctor. But at the end of that eight years, she will be making over $350,000 a year, which is really good. Now at the end of that time period, her loans are probably gonna be closer to like $600,000, $700,000. So her debt to income ratio is gonna be somewhere around two to one. Now a general rule of thumb when it comes to student debt to income ratio is you never wanna go above three to one. So this means if you're doing research and you see that the career makes on average about $100,000 a year, 
you don't want to go any more than $300,000 in student loan debt. And that three to one figure is at the very high end. Like realistically, you probably want to keep it under two to one if possible. And there's a lot more to it than that. I'll probably make a video about this in the future. But basically, the more money you make, the higher that ratio can be. So if you make enough money, you can even maybe even go a little bit above a three to one ratio. And this is just because of the fact that your lifestyle in terms of how much it costs for you to live doesn't increase that much as your income goes up. And so you're able to pay more towards the loans. So this is on the high end, two to one debt to income ratio. It's kind of bad, but honestly, this is still relatively manageable. I've honestly seen a lot worse than this. And as long as she's got a really good plan, she should be okay. Now, just from the information that she reveals in this video, knowing nothing else about her situation, just generally speaking, the best bet for her at this point is to either do the pay as you earn or the revised pay as you earn plan. And this basically means that she would pay 10% of her discretionary income for either 20 or 25 years. After that period, her loan balance would be forgiven. However, she would still have to pay income tax on whatever is left. Now, chances are there would be a really large amount left. It would probably be still around $700,000 because she's probably not even touching the interest. And so she'd have to save money either in a savings account or maybe an investment account in order to pay pay off that income that she'd have to pay whenever she gets that loan forgiven. And that would probably be, I'm guessing, at least $200,000 to $250,000 that she'd have to pay. Now, the reason I think that she should go with the pay as you earn model is because of the fact that she's going to be in residency and then a fellowship for the next eight years. And then after that, she'd only have about 12 years to go before she would get that student loan forgiveness. Now, if she becomes an amazing doctor, she starts making a ton of money, then and she can stop doing the pay as you earn and she can start aggressively paying down the loan. At that point, if she is making above $350,000 a year, maybe she lives in New York and she's making more like $400,000 a year, she can start aggressively paying it down and probably take it out in around, I don't know, four to five years, somewhere around there. But if something happens for whatever reason, she's not able to get a really good job or maybe she's making less than what she thought she would be making, then she can always fall back on the 20 year uh, loan forgiveness. So in this next part, she talks about how she lives in New York and the rent and the cost of living is just like ridiculously high. And this is what Graham has to say about it. Figure out what the bare minimum is that you can live off of and like still have like food on the table. It doesn't need to be expensive food, but like what's the bare minimum you really need to live? So Graham's giving some great advice here and honestly props to this lady for being a beast because medical school is really hard. And after graduating from school, it's so easy to fall into the trap of what's known as lifestyle inflation or lifestyle creep. And that's basically where when you start making more money, you also start spending more money. After all, you worked so hard to become a doctor and now you wanna live that doctor lifestyle, right? Wrong. She's already used to living like a student, so she should continue living that frugal lifestyle. Live like that for as long as she possibly can, put away as much money as she can, and pay down that loan. Great advice by Graham here, I 100% agree. Now something he didn't mention here, uh, which is basically just kind of a psychology lesson, I guess you could say, is once you're used to a certain standard of living, it's really difficult to go back to a lower standard. Like, let's say you're living in a small apartment right now and you're watching this video. It's probably not that big of a deal. But let's say you're used to living in a luxurious penthouse or a giant uh, mansion or something like that. If you went from that situation to having to live in a really small apartment, it would probably bother you a lot. So in terms of lifestyle, once you upgrade your lifestyle, it's very difficult to downgrade it again. Now this is related to concepts around hedonic normalization. I'm not really gonna get into that very much, but basically what I'm trying to say here is you should try to live below your means for as long as you can. Especially if you have a lot of debt, you shouldn't be spending a lot of money on stuff that you don't need. Do you know anything about public service loan forgiveness? Okay, so at this point she asks about the PSLF program, the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. This one gets thrown around a lot. You'll see it a lot on the internet. And basically it's where you make the minimum payment for about 10 years and then the rest of your loan gets completely forgiven. However, there's a ton of stipulations that you have to meet. You have to be working for either a government agency or a nonprofit for 10 years. 
and you have to meet all these different characteristics and stipulations, it's really difficult for you to do it. Only about 1% of people who apply for PSLF end up qualifying for it. So it's definitely not easy to get at all. Now it's way too much to go over in this video, but you have a much better chance of qualifying for it if you graduate with certain degrees and you go into certain careers. And depending on the specialty route that she goes into, she probably won't be able to get accepted. Turns out there's not that many government or nonprofit programs that give boob jobs, nose jobs, and plastic surgery related stuff. However, if she went into reconstructive surgery, for instance, she'd have a much better chance of getting it, but still it's not as good as some of the other college degrees. And again, I'll probably make a video about that in the future. It's a really long shot to be honest. She should probably look into it, but I don't think it's gonna work out. I would not bank on that. I would not right. try to go that route. Looks like Graham agrees with me here. I'm lucky I don't have any kids. So, I mean, that would completely throw over the ball game because paying for children is super expensive. So this is kind of the heartbreaking part about you know this whole student loan business, especially when it comes to people that go deep in debt like doctors, orthodontists, dentists, basically all the types of professions where you're gonna be deep in debt until your late 30s, sometimes even your early 40s. Some of these people put off having kids until their late 30s and then a lot of them end up just not having them at all. Now, I'm not assuming that she does or doesn't want to have kids. I don't think she actually mentioned that in the video. I thought it's something that I should bring up. She's probably going through 16 years of working or studying over 80 hours a week. And that's before she even starts making doctor money. Then another four to five years of living like a student and just living super frugally and paying down her debt before she reaches a net worth of zero. This is why I personally prefer degrees and careers where you probably don't make as much as a doctor, but it also doesn't have that ridiculous amount of time commitment. I'd rather be able to enjoy the best years of my life and not live like half of my life with a net worth that is well below zero. But that's just me. You know, there's some people that are just machines and they're built like that to you know look way into the future just think long term and yes eventually it will pay off for her but for most people i think they would appreciate a more balanced lifestyle where you have that work-life balance where work doesn't consume basically your entire life and at the very least it's worth it for me to mention it just so that you guys know what you would be getting yourselves into if you decided to go this route check out graham's video I will link it down in the description. He's an awesome YouTuber. Uh, I've been following him for a long time and I kind of just wanted to react to one of his reactions. And then check out my videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and then comment down below any thoughts, comments, or criticisms.